This is a moonlight scene. It's a monocolour scene or monochrome. And we're using Prussian blue and white. This is a good scene for you to practice over and over and practice your brush strokes and get used to using the tools. We start by picking up plenty of blue and we can put it right across the top. In fact, you could paint the whole board with Prussian blue if you want to over here. There, that's a nice coat of Prussian blue. I'll pick up a little bit of white. I picked it up right on the corner of my brush there. Now, here's where you start to decide what you want. I want a moonlight scene. Now, do I want the moon low or high? Let's just put it not in the middle, just a bit off centre. Let's put it there. Okay, crisscross, crisscross. That's where the moon is there. Just make it, move it out slowly into the blue. And your brush will run out of paint. And this is what we want. Now yours might look exactly like mine, but don't worry, just have this effect of the moon giving a glow in that area there. So that's our start. We've established a bright bit and that will attract your eye. Now for the mountains, I'll load the brush with the blue and a little bit of white on one side. Let's just mix it there to start with. And when I bring it over here, I've got the dark on this side of my brush and the light on the top, not much. And we'll have some mountains. We'll keep them low because we can always bring them up if they're not right. And there's a mountain there. That's a very low mountain. So brushing in. They don't have to have a very neat edge on mountains. You can have a rather rough finish on the top of the mountain. And then across the bottom and fade it into the ground like this. Now what you have to note is that mountains don't go like this. We don't want them like that. We want a pleasant, cool, nighttime scene. Do slope your mountains in at the edge and into the edge. Don't let them drop off it whatsoever. Don't come up here and then all of a sudden go like that. No, they must come in at a deliberately in angle here and an in angle here. Clean the brush down there if you wish. Put a little bit more paint up there, a little bit more brush in there. That's it. Okay. Put a bit of paint on your finger like that. And then on the middle of where your moon is, do a circle, and that's the start for your moon. And from there, with a little bit more paint, you can do it with a brush if you wish, you can add little bits, and colour them in a little bit, touch them in so they don't become brilliant white, because there is a little bit of a shape in it. That's the moon. Now here's where you can decide what you want in your painting. Work out what you want by what you have already, and then put things in there that you like. Maybe you like figures, maybe you like trees, but it's quite easy because all you need to do is paint the silhouette of these items and put them in there. In fact, you could cut them out in black paper or anything really and put them on there just to see how they look before you start painting, especially if you're really happy with your moon. So with this one here, it can have something big there. It's no good something putting something big there because everything's over that side. The moon is the attraction, so something go here. And of course, I like trees, so I can put a tree there and something here, but you don't always have to do that. There's many different things you could put in there, and there's several different blues you can use. I'm going to load the brush with some dark on one side, quite a little bit of white on the other side. So I've got the two colours on the brush again, dark and light, and I'll run it from this side, I'll start with the masking tape, and run it right across under those mountains. And that gives me a background. I'll do it again in the middle of the painting because I want you all attracted to the middle of the painting. And then with my rather soft flat brush, I'll pick up some blue, candy blue. I'll just put some up here to see how it looks. That's about where we've got the tree, I'd say. Now, here's where you have to think. The shape of the tree. Don't make your tree square. Now, I just do it deliberately. Don't make the tree square like that and coming around like that. Just because the board's square, the trees aren't like that. Be, the size of your tree has to be relevant to the trunk. Say the trunk's there. Well, that tree looks about balanced. But if it was a big trunk, that big trunk out there, I won't put it there, but if it was, the tree would have to go right up past, past the painting. So therefore your tree would finish right up here somewhere. And here, you can practice shapes of trees. The umbrellas. You see that umbrella? An umbrella there. Let's have an umbrella here. Load the brush again. Now we're really here, and one here, say. Mm, I'll have this one going off the painting, there. 
I better have one in the middle because that looks a bit odd. That could be an umbrella over the other side of the tree maybe, and one up there. Load again. Okay, yes, that looks about balanced. The trunk will need to come up maybe like that and like that. Not too thick. And then, with a bit of white on one edge of your brush, just put a little bit of the moonlight there. Not on everything, just a few things. Just imagine where the moon would be shining. It would be shining there like that. And it would probably be shining down this edge here, so you just touch it on like that. And it would be shining there. And it might be shining on this bit over here, and it might be shining on there. As it is. And then we might have a little branch with a little bit of moonlight on. Might be a bit there, and there might be a little bit of moonlight on this branch and this branch. Now, if they don't turn out, just leave them. As long as they're not a disaster, just leave them there. And you can always paint you can always paint leaves over the top if you wish. So if you have one that, that definitely doesn't look right, well then you clean your brush, pick up the dark, a couple of dabs and he's gone. Let's try something else. I'll load again. And let's put some little trees in the background here. Just little ones, and I'll put a shadow underneath them. That's it. And with a little tiny bit of white, just a little bit of white on the edge of my brush. That's, that might be a little bit too bright. That's a little bit too bright. I'll, I'll put that bit there because it'd be okay there, but it's a little bit too bright for that distance. I'll double the brush down a bit. We get some there. That's not so bright. That's better. You see those little bits of colour on the edge of the trees? Not much. Don't go overboard with this. Too little is better than too much. That's all you do, just touch them, touch them, touch them. On that side of the brush I've got dark, on this side I've got light. So I can touch them on like this, and then come back with my light and put some light on them. And then with the dark side. Under here we need dark. I'm over there, pick up a little bit of dark, a little darken under the tree here. Of course there'd be a shadow for the tree, wouldn't there? There'd have to be a shadow there like that. That's a hair there. Okay, while we're up close here, have a look at the detail of my brush strokes. They're higgly-piggly. That's okay. Don't try and get everything perfect. Whatever you do, don't come fiddling around here trying to make it look good. It's okay just like that. Because that tree is quite a distance away and you don't look at paintings that close. You should stand back about 10 foot and have a look at them. Now I want to criticise this straight away. You see that white there? It attracts your eye to there. I prefer, I'll take it off the masking tape first, I prefer there was only just a little bit there. There. That keeps your eye coming in. And that's no good either. See, it's got a square edge on it. It makes you think there's something there. So we'll take that out. There. That looks a bit better. On the same, on the other side, that's too bright. We haven't finished over there yet. What can we have over there? Well, you can put whatever you wish. We can load our fan brush up and let's paint in. Let's have a palm tree just to be different. There. That's a palm tree. Now we do need a bit of a, a stem on a very thin stem on a palm tree. Okay, and I'll clean my brush down here because I know it's got dark on it, but we need some darks down there. And while I'm doing that, I'll tidy this up in here. So you can see how we use whatever's on our brush, use it to your advantage. If it's not right, wipe it off. There's a palm tree. It's a bit funny looking, but it doesn't matter. It's okay. And if you want to run a white line down the palm tree, take your painting knife, load it with white, just on the edge like that and touch your painting knife on there. Now before you do that, have a few practices on your practice board. Well, what else can we do? Let's put another palm tree. We'll have a little one down here, like that. Let's have the other one's not on its own. There. There's just a few crosses, and there. Now that one's further away. I'm not going to put the white on that one. So here, you see, that palm tree is not complete. It doesn't matter. Not for this one, because this is a moonlight scene. And here, you can't quite see it. Being a moonlight scene, you can't see all these things. And don't try and brush in the top of the mountain so it's perfect. 
So leave things a little bit rustic like this. It looks so much better. Try and put things on one brush stroke. If it looks okay, leave it. And of course, practice your brush strokes over here. That's a palm tree. Like that, down, there, there. They have up to 12 on them. So four or five or six or seven is okay. And they hang down too. And some stick almost straight up like that. And then just brush in your stem like that. You can practice palm trees all over. Big ones, little ones. It's your palm trees. Have a pleasant curve on them. Have this pleasant curve. Yeah. Palm trees. That might be a coconut. There. Now these palms, you can use them on the ground too, so let's do some palms on the ground. There's two colours on that brush now, dark and light. And over on our painting, have a look at the shape. That's a pretty good shape to bring into a, a road, so we'll make that up as we go along. We'll turn that into a road. Oh, let's have a little palm here. A few little palms. Okay, don't go back over it, you'll spoil it. Let's load it again. This time the paint's a lot thicker on my brush and therefore I wanted to have bigger ones because we're a lot closer. There. Load the brush again. They don't look like palms, so we'll do something that does look like a palm. There you are. There. Now, the trick is dark to light. Because it's in the foreground, there's very dark, dark and very light, light. That's the moon supposed to be shining off there. Well, we've got palms on that side. I guess we can have palms on the other side. That one there, ooh, that's a big one. That's okay. And they're bright because they're right in the moonlight there. They're catching the moonlight. As I work across here, my brush will wear out. I'm hoping it will because I don't want it so bright there. No, yes, it's just wearing out a bit there. So I'll just dab it a little bit here. I don't want it too bright there. I'll go for the dark because I want the darks now. So what I want you to concentrate on here is the fact that you do have that dark in there, in the light. You can have little bits of not quite so dark, but not much of that. Because we see the fern so much there, then we'd say, oh, we'd have to see that on our trees. So maybe it's a little bit more. That's a bit better. That's it, but don't overdo the light because we do want a silhouette effect. Now let's find some faults. That's too bright. I'll load my knife with the dark. I'll clean the knife before I load it. And I'll just touch the dark over the top of the light. Now it's all gone. I need to load it with the light again. Get the light ready and load it like that. And I'll be very careful to put it on the right side of the trunk. Just a little bit. Oh, that's going to get a bit bright for me. That's better. It will look better from a distance. Now, that's not standing out so much. So the object of this lesson is for you to realise that you make it up as you go along. The good things, you leave them there. And then you add things to your painting as you go. If you're trying to copy something, well then, that's a little bit advanced. So do not try to copy mine exactly. Make yours up as you go along. Keep your horizon low, and if you make a mistake, then that's okay, as long as you realise the mistake, because then you'll know not to do that again. So you can paint this scene over and over again. You can put whatever you wish in it. You can put cottages, you can experiment, you can put horses or dogs or anything, just to get your hand into painting. It's very easy to paint in blue and white, or brown and white, and then you learn to use the tools, and then you get better and better as you go along.